Hi, in this tutorial, we will work on some exercises to actually normalize tables that are not in BCNF. This is, this is what we need as, as input to solve the exercises. We need a table, which in this example is table R that has B, A, H, L, C, A, T. We were working with this table in a, in a previous tutorial and we identify that the candidate key for this table is LC. So the, the input, what, what I need is, is the table, of course, and I need the set F of functional dependencies. Remember, this chapter is based on functional dependencies, on the normalization, on the way that we identify the current normal form up to BCNF is using functional dependencies. So then we need a set of functional dependencies associated with the table, which in this case is table R. It has two functional dependencies. And remember the beginning of the chapter, we explained what a functional dependency was and how these are related with constraints and, and hold some semantics in the database. Okay, so we also have been working identifying candidate keys using functional dependencies for the, the for, for a table and then once we have a candidate key we we, we can find what we call prime attributes non-prime attributes and super keys okay so for this table the candidate key is lc remember this lc is not given we you're supposed to find that information so in this case he you inspect here l is an attribute that is not derived and this is the only one that is not derived and we, we know from the previous example that that's an attribute that, that should be part of every candidate key if L is, the, is a candidate key that will be the only one so by getting L we can get B, A, T and by getting B we can get H so we can get all the attributes but C and then the candidate key for what we explained in the previous tutorial is LC now, what is the current normal form? So, the way that we identify that, we go for each functional dependency and the left hand side needs to be a super key. So, for the first functional dependency, we have a B. B is not a super key. Why? Because candidate key is LC. So, we need to have an LC as part of the attributes in this part. So, it's not BCNF. Then we check the right hand side to see if these attributes are prime. They are not prime. So, it's not BNF. And then we check if every non prime attribute is fully dependent on the candidate key. And we see here that we only got L without the C, we're able to derive non prime attributes. Then this is not 2NF, therefore R is currently a 1NF relationship. So then in this exercise, what we want to do is okay, we identify a table that is not a good table because it's in 1NF. And we want our tables to be BCNF. The algorithm that is described in the PowerPoints for this lecture, it says, okay, now for every functional dependency that is uh, not, uh, that is making the table not to be in uh, BCNF, we take away the attributes from the left hand side I mean, from the right hand side, in this case, B, the term is AH, is making this table not to be in a uh, BCNF, right? Then what we do is, is that we split the table in two. So the one table, we take away the A and the H, so we remove the A and the H, so we leave the B, and then in the other table, we put the attributes B, A, and H, because that's for the first, for the first uh, um, functional dependency. So this is what we have here. So here, this table R, we're dividing that in two tables, R1 and R2. So an R1 is the same as R, but without the A and the H. And then in the other table is all attributes of the first functional dependency, B, A, H. Why we're doing that? Because remember that we want um, relationships that, I mean relations, I'm sorry, that are uh, lossless joint. So the attribute that they will have in common is B, and B will determine the other attributes. So B will act as the primary key in R, and that will make um, this to be lossless. And 
here we also split the the functional dependencies so the first functional dependencies can be applied on r and the second functional dependencies on r2 so the first one in r1 and the second one in r2 so so far it is dependency preserving and it's lossless so now if we go with the keys so on the second table the key will be b so this is perfect because the second table is now bcnf why because the only functional dependency the left hand side is super key and that's what we have here so we're done with r now with r2 r1 this is the table that we have and then this is the functional dependency that we have and then the candidate key for this table r1 will be again lc now if we check for the functional dependency associated with r1 it will make this not to be in bcnf why because l by cell is not a super key we need the c then r1 and that's what the algorithm says we keep splitting the table so then we split r1 in two tables how do we do the procedure remember every functional dependency that makes the table not to be in bcnf we subtract the attributes from the from the table that are on the right hand side of that functional dependency so then from r1 we're going to take away the b and the at and the other table will have the l b a t this is what we have here so r1 now has been divided into r3 and r4 and then here we took away the attributes b a t we got l c and then here we got l b a t so now this functional dependency can be applied on uh, r4 then we're preserving the dependency and this one doesn't have any functional dependencies, which is okay. So here the candidate key is LC, is still LC, but then there is no functional dependency to contradict. So R3 is now in BCNF, and R4 is also in BCNF because the only functional dependency that we have, R, is a candidate key and it's a super key. So finally, we got the answer. R is going to be divided into three tables, which is R3, R3 and r2 which is this this is what we call the normalization so this is the decomposition that we got d is the decomposition and we got r2 r3 and r4 so again if we do a join on r2 and r3 and r4 we should get back the r right and this decomposition is dependency preserving because the the, the dependencies are preserved okay Okay, so let's continue with another example. So now, there will be cases when a table we cannot get it into BCNF because we, are, we will not be able to preserve the dependencies. Then in that case, we will be happy with uh, with 3 and F. Okay, so to be able to understand the process of normalizing tables into 3 and F, we need the concepts of cover of F and minimum cover of minimum, uh, the, the, the F minimum. And that's what we're going to explain now. That all of this is in the PowerPoint for this class. So here we got two sets of functional dependencies. Now, one of the questions is remember the functional dependency, we can derive others. For example, the first one, B, determine C, D. We can say B determine C, B, determine D. What, what I'm saying is, well, there are different ways of representing these sets with different elements, but they will be the same. So now, what they say here, show that F is a cover of G. And then what it means is, from F, we should be able to derive all attributes, I mean, all functional dependencies that are in G. If that happens, we say that that's a cover. So in this case, this is what the notation say. Can F logically implies B determine C D, which is the first functional dependencies? Can F logically imply the second functional dependency of G? Can F logically imply the third functional dependency? If we got yeses, like I have here I have the question, then uh, um, then the answer is yes, F is a cover. So to do that, we do the F class. The F class is B C D A. That means and, and, and I think those are all attributes there. So that means this is derived. Why? Because CDE is a subset of the B plus. ABC is a subset of the B plus. And AD 
as n is given is in the 2. You see, a d implies e is in f, and a d implies e is in g. That means f can imply the logical derive all other functional dependency, all functional dependencies that are in g. Then, therefore, those what the, those three dots means f is a cover of g. Now, let's the the fact that f is a cover of g doesn't uh, imply that G is also covered of F. So to do that, we check on the following. So we say, can G logically imply the first functional dependency of F? Can G logically imply the second functional dependency and so on? Can G logically imply, if we got yeses for all, then it is also. Now, don't confuse when we do the F plus from F, we're only using functional dependencies that are in F. So here, when we do the F B plus, we are only considering functional dependencies that are in G. So again, is B, B can determine CD? Yes, why? Because CD is a subset of B plus. And then the same here would be implies A and A, D, E is given. Therefore, G is a cover of F. Now, when F is a cover of G and G is a cover of F, then we can conclude that they are equivalent. That means they are the same. So now this is a nice example that we got two sets that they look different, but they are equivalent. Okay. Now, this will also pose the question that, well, we got those two sets and there may be multiple sets or representations of functional dependencies that, uh, that means the same. And now the question is, how can we get the mean? And that's uh, another uh, question that we have to address. So here, f, given this this question, f determines uh, a determines the first functional dependency, a determines b, c, and then the other one, two, three are dependencies that are there. The, there must be other um, sets that are equivalent, right? But we're looking for a set that we call that as the mean, the f mean. Why? Because that's the one that we're going to need to normalize to 3 and f. So once we have an f, we find the minimum, and then we, uh, from that, each one of the attributes from the functional dependencies will become a table. So the procedure to find the f min is also uh, um, explained in the PowerPoint, but I will illustrate it in this example. So what we do first, the first step is all functional dependencies should have a single attribute on the right. So for example, it determines BC. This is split into these two, A determines B and A determines C. And then the next one, then the term B determines C is there. It's a single attribute. A determines A, B is a single attribute, and A, B determines C is a single attribute. The next thing is we eliminate redundancies. So the redundancies is maybe attributes that are being repeated. Like for example, L determines B and A determines B is twice. So we eliminate that one. And then with A determines B and B determines C, that can deny A determines C. So A determines C is also redundant. So that's what is being eliminated. Now, why we're eliminating A determines uh, A, B determines C? Because that can be derived from, from these two. So, for example, here in B, if we add the A here, then they will say A determines, A, B determines A, C and AC determines C, then AB determines C. So this is also redundant. So these three functional dependencies are being eliminated. That's what I had here as explanation. AB determines AC and C, so that's I'm explaining that. So the F mean is, is these two. So what it means is this F and F mean are equivalent. That means F is a cover of F mean and F mean is a cover of F but we only care for a proper normalization about the F mean. So again, there are multiple representations of uh, these sets that would be equivalent. So we're looking for the F mean and that was the procedure. Here is another example. So here, what is the step number one to find the F mean? Well, the right hand side of each functional dependency should be a single attribute. So here A determines AC here, that A determines A, A determines C comes from the first functional dependency. From B determines A, B, C, we got these three functional dependencies. B determines A, B determines B, B determines C, and then the same with D determines A, B, C, we got these attributes. Once we have that, 
we're looking for redundant attributes, and that's the part that looks the hardest. So, for example, this is trivial, A determines A, B determines B. Those are trivial, so those are being eliminated. And then um, here, B determines A, and A determines C, so B can, uh, by transitivity, determine C, so B determines C can be eliminated. Now, um, D determines B, and B determines A will also apply that D determines A. So this is another one that is uh, um, redundant. And then the same here, D determines B, B determines A, and A determines C. We can get that from, from there. So then these four functional dependencies are redundant. So finally, the F mean is these three sets. And this is what we're looking for. If we were trying to normalize a table that has these attributes, these functional dependencies associated, these would be the, the way that we will get the tables. Right? By you doing the union of these two sides, but we will discuss that in an example. So our next example, and I will stop here because now the tutorial is too big. Again, to find the F min, this is the set that we have. So the procedure looks uh, and check first that the right hand side of each functional dependency has a single attribute. So in this case, we see that they already have that. So what we need to do is find for redundancies. And the one that we found that is redundant is this one. The A, B determines C is redundant. Why? Because that can be derived from the other attributes. That means if you do the A, B plus from these attributes, you can get the C. So that means the F min is just this set. Okay, thank you.